Hey, what's going on guys? Kurosama here, and today we're going to have a review on the LBCS Achilles Karina Mikazuki. So, I have been eagerly awaiting this kid back in the day, uh, maybe around, I think they announced it in November, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, I was just like, man, I cannot wait to pick this kid up, and it just looks really cool, really neat. Um, I'm not a huge LBX kind of fan, but I have recently got into it. So, I was like, you know what, I really want to try this line out, and I built the LBX Achilles really enjoyed that and now I do have the uh, LBX or LBCS Achilles right in front of you and I really enjoyed it it's it was really a fun kit didn't have any problems building it um, but there are some underlining issues with the overall product so that's something I will get into a little bit later uh, but my overall initial thoughts is it's a really cool kit I mean it looks really cool to have on your shelf um, it can definitely mix and match with other uh, you know kits from the you know Megami device line or even the frame arms girl line so if you want to add on some missiles or maybe get a sword from the uh, MSG line you can definitely do so and kind of customize her the way you want but regardless let's go ahead and jump into the review and I'd like to thank New Type for sponsoring this video. If you want to pick up this kit or any other kits along this line, you can definitely go to NewTypeHQ.com, use that promo code Kurosama, so that way you can get 10% off. So this particular character and design is actually from a mobile game called Soko Musume, a game from DMM and Level 5. Now Level 5 is also the creators of the LBX series, so you can kind of see the collaboration there. Now for the details, let's start with the head. Uh, overall, the head sculpt is really nice. I love the hair sculpt as well. You got the like braids right there in the back. It, it really looks good. So no real issues there. Uh, now when it comes to the hair, obviously in the actual artwork, it shows that it's more shaded and like kind of like highlights at the end of the ponytail, uh, vice the entire ponytail looking red. But you are going to get an extra little blonde one. So if you want, you can connect this, make it all blonde, and then just use some airbrush, um, you know, use some paint and airbrush the actual kind of shading here, which is something I am actually going to do. And you also get a red connecting point, so I have the blonde one on there right now, uh, but if you want to make it all red, you definitely can. So we'll take a look at the body. Overall, it looks really good. You're going to have that nice blue metallic parts right there, and you're also going to have kind of like a pearl white uh, for the actual blouse. But, you know, the ruffles look really good. Love the design of those. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to have the floral designs on the base of the blouse, so that kind of sucks. You're going to have to freehand that if you really want that design in there. But overall, I do think this looks really good. So we're taking a look at the arms. The details look really good. You're going to have some nice little designs etched into the side of the arm right there. So these are, you know, basically supposed to be blue, even in the illustration. But if you want to just paint those to make them pop a little bit more, uh, you definitely can. However, you are going to require some paint right here on the base of the shoulder pad. Um, it's going to need some white right there on the bottom. So kind of sucks, but hey, you got to bust out them paints and do some color correction. Hey, we're looking at the skirt. So basically you're gonna have some nice different color separation all right here. You are gonna still have that metallic blue, but you're also gonna have kind of like this egg white right there. Uh, then you're gonna have more of the uh, the flat white right here at the bottom for the skirt as well as the black. But the frills look really good. I, I mean, I would honestly recommend maybe do some, um, some shading of blue right there. That's probably the, the route I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna use pastels instead of using the airbrush. But you know, it still looks really good. And you're also gonna have these nice, little I don't know what you would call these like ribbons on the back uh, but unfortunately they don't move they are just kind of you know hard plastic so you can't really like wrap it around her or anything of the sort like it is illustrated on the actual box artwork so with the legs, you are going to have multiple color separation. You are going to have the flesh tone right there for the legs. You know, it's going to go into the more egg white, the metallic blue, the black, as well as the yellow. Now, I probably would recommend maybe changing the yellow to gold if you can, uh, or maybe even changing uh, some of this egg white to silver, just to kind of match the whole, you know, girl and armor type uh, trope. But it looks really good nonetheless. I do love the overall details that they add here to the legs. It just, I mean, it gives you a lot of opportunities to go ahead and paint it and just kind of, you know, separate a little bit of that blue. Now you also have this beautiful cape. Um, it's going to have a wire that just runs along the entire edge of the uh, the cape itself. And you're going to have this A that's basically, um, I don't know, it feels like it's pretty much like ironed on to the actual cloth but the cloth itself is really nice I mean you can really bend it and put it in a lot of different ways I, I 
I really don't have any problems with it. You just got to kind of work it if you really want it to just stand straight out like that or if you want to kind of like move it around. It, it's basically just connected on the back and then this wire right here uh, basically helps support it. So no real issues right there. And one thing I did not mention in the, uh, the waist is that you're going to have a kind of like floor de lis right here on the, uh, the back skirt. But for the uh, the cape itself, I really have no problems. It's a lot better than what the uh, LBX kits come with. Uh, they came with uh, a you know paper thing that you just cut out, so that's pretty horrible. But at least with this, you get a pretty decent cloth cape. Now let's take a look at articulation. The ponytail is going to be on a hinge joint, a peg that moves around, hinge joint for the head, also a ball joint, ball joint for the shoulder, also a hinge joint. This shoulder piece can also move all the way around, but sometimes you're really going to have to uh, push these two parts in so that way it can stay, otherwise it's going to be very loose. Bicep swivel. Two points of articulation right here in the arm. This wrist armor can actually rotate a little bit. Hands can rotate as well. Ab crunch. Midsection is going to be on a ball joint. The skirt can move up and out. Back skirts can move out. Legs can spread out about that far. Leg can move forward that much back this far swivel at the thigh two points of articulation right here and right here ankle can rotate beautiful foot pivot and the toe bend so the articulation i think it's okay uh definitely some shortcomings in the hips but everywhere else is fairly okay i kind of wish the side skirts or just the skirts in general was kind of made a little bit differently so that way you can see it wave a little bit more and as well as the ribbons in the back i you know they just kind of like sit there whereas the illustration kind of shows them going forward so if they could have been cloth as well or just have like some kind of hinges or something like that that would have made this a lot better now for the hands you are going to get this wrist joint that is very similar to the like frame arms girl magama device line but these are only going to be compatible with the fist as well as the open hands the rest of the hands are just going to be built into this peg now for hands, you are going to get two fists, these open hands, which I absolutely think they look disgusting. One tilted hand to hold the spear, and two gripping hands so that way she can hold the shield. Now for faces, you are going to get the blank stare, this cheerful face, a determined face, and this more screaming face. Now you will get some of these extra polycat pieces, but they're not really necessary. You also get these water slide eyes, so if you do decide to paint the face, you can go ahead and replace those eyes with these. And you also get a stand, but honestly, it cannot support much weight when it's being distributed closer to the front. It kind of just topples over, so you got to kind of keep it all very balanced. Next, we're taking a look at the lance. It has a beautiful, beautiful design. This is probably one of the best looking lances I've seen pretty much to date when it comes to model kits. But the main handle is going to be right here, which is very identified with all these Ks. Uh, this is just a smooth part right here. Not really too sure if this can actually be held by the character. Uh, I really don't really see a purpose why you would do that. Just go ahead and kind of hold it more close to the base. But if you look right inside here, and here's going to be some nice little etched in details. So what I would recommend, uh, this is per the illustration, is uh, maybe get some blue all inside there. So if you really don't want to go the like really detailed route on getting that accomplished, uh, maybe just use like maybe, I don't know, like a Gundam marker and paint all the inside there and then just clean up all the excess on top. So you, that way you have all that blue inside the crevices and then the top can still be white. That's just going to you know really add to it and make it look really damn good. So here is the shield. Not much in terms of color separation because a lot of this you're going to have to paint on your own. So all this trimming here on the side, you're going to have these little bits right here, as well as this little circle piece around the spike. All that is going to have to be painted yellow. Uh, but other than that, you are going to have the yellow Florida Lee already right there. And you're also going to have a spike in the middle, which is white. But on the inside, you're not going to have much of anything at all. And even in the illustration, this is just how it is uh unfortunate but a kind of is what it is now you do get multiple different handles so this handle is more for actually holding on the side of the arm this one is for holding the shield straight forward
and this piece actually attached to the wrist, but it's a fairly weak connection. And for comparison, here she is next to the LBX Achilles Frame Arms Girl Architect. And here she is next to the Figma Ryuko from Kill a Kill. So for my final thoughts on this kit, honestly, there's a lot of pros to this kit. Uh, like the cloth, the uh, cape is really solid, has a little wire so that way I can kind of like pose it in some really good angles. Um, the overall kit itself is very sturdy and very tight. The only problems you are going to have is going to be with the arms. The arms just don't want to just work with me. So the shoulder joint, that little you know ball joint, that thing does not stay firmly into the shoulder socket. So you're going to have to do some editing on that. Maybe just run some uh, nail polish on it to you know tighten it up and then see if that works. Also, the little shoulder armor, there's no white. It's uh, definitely missing, as well as the, the little color on the shield. So, kind of sucks. You're going to have to bust out the paints for those. And then the wrist armor, that little blue piece next to the hand, that thing does not have a secure like fit into that socket or into like the wrist. So, that just kind of sucks. And I don't really know too many ways to remedy that unless you like glue it. But you do want that kind of rotation of that wrist armor because it can uh, at least get in the way a little bit when you're kind of posing both the shield as well as the spear. But really, other than that, guys, this is a solid kit. It looks really good. It feels really good whenever you play with it. Just make sure that you are keeping those shoulder joints in mind. That way you don't like just accidentally make it fall off or you don't hold it by the arm and then the body just falls. Uh, I've done that quite a bit when I was doing this. I was like holding the arm itself, not holding the rest of the body. Then the body would just pop off and fall. But other than that guys, it's really good. You're gonna get it for about $60 or so. Maybe maybe you can get it for a little bit uh, cheaper around 55. Uh, but ensure you go over to newtypehq.com, see if you can pick it up from there. And then if you can, use that promo code Krosama, so that way you can get 10% off. I want you to save as much money as possible on getting this kit if you do decide you want it. Uh, but if you're already into the Frame Arms Girl as well as the Megami Device line, this is just a really good compliment to that line. I, I definitely really endorse this kit uh, for any collector of that particular line. Uh, but if you're into Gunpla, you, I don't know if you're going to enjoy it or not. Maybe. But for me, I thoroughly, I, I had a great time building it. I'd never had one moment where I was like frustrated. I thought the build was very smooth. You really don't see the nubs anywhere because they were very um, conveniently placed at times. Uh, nothing was undergated, of course, but you know, it was not really too bad. So didn't have any issues and I think it looks really good. And this is without panel lines, this is without any extra details. Uh, but I will be getting around to doing that. So that's it for me, guys. Definitely thank you for watching. And stay tuned for more future kits, reviews on Megami Device or Frame Arms Girl or whatever else Kotobuki likes to dish out. But that's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.